Esselamu aleyküm ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuhu. Ağudu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. Şehid Allahu ennehu la ilahe illahu ve vel melaiketu ve ulul ilmi qaiman bil qaisu la ilahe illahu ve azizul hakim innat din indallahi islam elhamdülillah 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 rabbil alamin we thank Allah celle celaluhu and we are very happy and pleased with our brothers and sisters joining us tonight may Allah subhanahu wa give you good health may Allah subhanahu wa bless you and guide you and protect you all, inshallah. Uh, tonight, we'll be talking about the guidance the parents must show the path, the way to their children to be the best mu'min, the best Muslim. Allah says in the Quran, this is Surah Luqman. And uh, he had given advice to his son. And one of the advice that Sayyidina Luqman, may Allah be pleased with him, said to his son, he said, Oh my son, perform al-salat, perform your prayers, establish your prayers. Enjoin on people al ma'roof and forbid people from al munkar. So encourage on people to do good and forbid people from evil. So Sayyidina Luqman alayhi salam he said to his son, establish salat. See, now this is the most important. This is the most important. Because Allah says in the Quran, Salat will protect you from all kinds of haram. Salat, salat will protect you. So, if our children establish their salat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless them. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala seyyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allah's Messenger, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, every one of you is a guardian and is responsible for his charges. The ruler who has authority over people is a guardian and responsible for them. A man is a guardian of his family and is responsible for them. See? The man, the father, he is a guardian over his family and he is responsible over his family. A woman is a guardian over her husband's home and children and is responsible for them a slave is a guardian of his master's property and is responsible for it so all of you are guardians all of you are guardians and are responsible for your charges so the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is indicating that we are all responsible for those beneath us. So, when we have children, 
This is an amanet, a trust. We are responsible for them. We have to bring them up accordingly to the Quran and Sunnah. The Prophet of Allah said, Indeed, among the believers with the most complete faith is the one who is best in conduct and the most kind to his family. And we start with this. When we get married, the first thing that we start with is love, respect, kindness, honor to our wives, to our children. To all our family members. I'll repeat this hadith. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Indeed, among the believers with the most complete faith, Iman is the one who is the best in conduct and the most kind to his family. You have to have the best manners, especially around our children. We have to be a good role model because. What they see will impact their lives as they are growing. So if they see good akhlaq, good behavior, love and respect and honor amongst the family members, then they will also take in these beautiful qualities. And then when they grow up, when they get married, they'll also give love to their children. They'll love their wives. They'll respect one another. They'll be patient and calm and loving and caring. You can raise children in Islam by what? The first thing we start, okay, while we are raising our children, we start with kindness and gentleness. We have to be kind. We have to be gentle. We have to be loving. Okay, so we start with kindness and gentleness and love. And number two, setting a good example. Now, we have to be a good role model. We have to be a good example. Because our children, they are watching, they are listening, they are learning. So we have to be a good example for them. Our akhlaq, our manners must be the best. And that is the Quran and the Sunnah. Because the Quran and the Sunnah is perfect. And whoever lives the Quran and the Sunnah, likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the best akhlaq, the best manners, if you live according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Number three, providing a good environment. Ah, very important. So we should provide our families and our children a good environment. Take them to the masjid. Take them to the Islamic center, to the madrasa, where they learn the Quran. Always let them be in a good environment. Don't let your children just, you know, play around with anyone on the street. No. We have to always make a good environment for them. Because the environment will condition you. If it's a good environment, goodness and blessings will come towards you. But if our children are in a bad environment with bad friends, then only evil will come to them. And number four, offering sincere dua to Allah to make your children righteous. So we're going to make a lot of dua, Ya Allah, please you guide my children. Oh Allah, please Ya Allah, teach my children the Quran and the Sunnah. Oh Allah, give them the love for the Quran, the love for the deen, oh Allah. You know, help them to establish their salat. You know, we may dua, but we have to first of all, you know, get up and perform. And we have to be kind and gentle to our, towards our family members, our children. And we have to be the best example, set the best example for them and provide them a good environment. Always take them to the best places. Take your children to the masjid. Take your children to Islamic centers and madrasas where they can learn the Quran. And after we do what we can do, then we make dua to Allah. We ask Allah to guide them. 
we ask Allah to give them taqwa, to give them ikhlas, to give them the best akhlaq, the best manners. And, you know, a lot of effort is needed because today everyone's busy at work, they come home, and they are so tired, they have no time for their children. We, we must monitor our children, see, you know, who are they hanging around with? Who are their friends? What are they doing? Where are they going? And these are our, these are our you know, duties and our responsibilities towards our children. See, the children, our children, alhamdulillah, you know, when our children, the babies, when they're born, they are born pure. Every child is born pure. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, no child is born except on al-fitra, which is Islam. They are all born on the natural disposition of Islam. Every child is born pure. And then, look what the Prophet says, every child is born pure. But the Prophet was, and then their parents make him either a Jew, Jewish, you know, if the parents are Jewish, then the child will become Jewish. And either their parents will make them Christians, or their parents will make those children even the prophet mentions a magician. So what do we understand? It means however the parents are, more likely the children are going to be like their parents. Like I was speaking to one friend yesterday. He's a revert. He said, my parents used to always drink alcohol. And he said, well, I became an alcoholic. See, if your parents are always drinking, well, the children will end up drinking. If your parents are always gambling, going out to nightclubs and here, the children will be following them and doing the same. If the parents are taking drugs and this and that, well, the children will end up doing that. So the Prophet of Allah is saying the most important thing is the parents. If the parents are magicians, well, the children are going to be that. If the parents are going to be Jewish and following that faith, then the children are going to follow that faith. If the parents are corrupt and committing crimes and all kinds of sins, well, the children will follow that direction. So that's why the most important point is how are the parents. So we as parents, we must follow the Quran and the Sunnah. We must purify our souls. So the Prophet Allah says, every child, okay, is born on the fitra, okay, which is the fitra of Islam which is the, the nature of insan, pure nature. And then his parents make him Jewish, Christian, or magician. See, the parents corrupt the child. So we should not corrupt our children. That's the message there. The parents should not corrupt those pure angels. We have to guide them along the path of Quran and Sunnah. Children are like angels. So the Prophet Allah says, don't corrupt your children. If the parents are corrupt, then also the children will become corrupt. But if the parents are obeying Allah's messenger, are performing salat, likewise, you see the little children. They're three, four years old and they're following their parents. When the parents are making ruku and sujood, two-year-old child, you know, child is also making ruku and sujood to Rabbul Alameen, following the parents. As parents, you must respect and love your children. Everything starts with love, respect. We must love our children. We must respect our children. Very important. The Prophet always says, when they reach the age of seven, then teach them how to perform salat. 
teach them how to perform salat when they reach the age of seven. So the Prophet also he mentions the age of seven. Okay, from birth to seven, we should show them love, respect, honor. See, that child needs to learn love for seven years. We should be gentle with our children, loving towards our children, kind. We should give them what? Respect and honor and love. Then when they reach the age of seven, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, now you teach them how to perform salat. See? So from birth to the age of seven, very important. Otherwise, if we have bad akhlaq, bad manners, and we are doing all kinds of crimes and sins and all kinds of evil, well, that will traumatize our children. It will affect our children. So, as parents, you must respect and love your children and perform regular religious rituals with your children. So, you know, when you're performing salat, you know, perform your salat with your children. If you are going to the masjid, take your children to the masjid with you. Teach them. The deen, teach them Islam. Make sure you have a friendly relationship with your children. In this way, you can also guide your children more perfectly. Very important. Very important point. This would be one of the most important points. Now listen carefully. Make sure you have a friendly relationship with your children. You have to be kind and you have to have a good relationship with them. You take them out, you know, take them fishing, you know, help them, support them, you know, interact with them. And have a good loving relationship with them because then and only they'll listen to you. Then and only they'll respect you. Then and only they'll follow you. So, the, in this way, you can also guide your children. See? So, you're nice to them, you interact with them, you take them out, you do hello things with them, you know, you go to picnics with them and so forth, and at the same time, you are guiding them. Because they're happy to be with you. They're happy to be around you. See? While you're interacting with them, you can slowly, slowly guide them. For example, sometimes I take children for outings. And some of the children are not performing salat. They don't pray. But, you know, we can do a bit of fishing. We can do a bit of, you know, kick the ball around, we can, you know, do some bushwalking, some activities, and when the time of Salat comes, you know, then at the same time we're enjoying ourselves, you know, and then when the time of Salat comes, I say, okay, kids, okay, we're going to pray Salat. Everyone, let's wash up, let's go down to the creek, and let's make our wudu, we all wash up, and then we all pray together. And it's very easy for the ch children to do this. Why? Because you're interacting with them. You're showing them love. You respect them. You listen to them. You know, they are enjoying <laughs> you know, their day with you. And when the time of Salat comes, they're more than happy to also pray in Jamaat. So, very important. Once again, I'll repeat this. Make sure you have a friendly relationship with your children. You know, very important. You know, be friendly with them. Take them out. Interact with them. Because if you don't interact with them, if you're not friendly with them, and you're not taking them out, then you know what's going to happen? They're going to find their own friends. They're going to say, my dad's boring. Or they, you know, my dad's too busy. He's working. And I'm bored at home. 
my dad never takes me out. Well, I want to go to Peter's house. I want to go to John's house. I want to go here and there. And then what's going to happen? Shaitan will take him away from the remembrance of Allah. So make sure you have a friendly relationship with your children. In this way, you can also guide your children most perfectly. See? Because you're close to your children. And you're friendly with your children. It's easier to guide them because they'll listen to you. They'll learn from you. They'll follow you. Allah says in the Quran, your wealth and your children are only a trial, a test. So Allah says your wealth and your children. Why did Allah give you all this wealth? Why did Allah give you all these children? To see if you're going to be grateful to Allah. They are a test to see how you're going to guide your children along the path of Quran and Sunnah. To see how you're going to you know, spend time with your children and have worry and concern for their future. Because we're going to leave this life and we want our kids to always remember Allah, to worship Allah, to love Allah, to be a good role model. Your, uh, Allah says your wealth and your children are only a trial, a test, whereas with Allah, with him is a great reward. So it's a test and a trial, but with Allah is a great reward, meaning that if you, you know, Pass this test. Allah's giving you children. Well, if you guide them, a great reward is waiting for you with Allah. Allah's giving you so much wealth, but if you spend this wealth in the right place, help the miskin, the fuqara, the yakin, pay your zakat, sadaqah, and so forth, a great reward is waiting for you. It's a test. Allah's giving you wealth. Well, spend this wealth in the path of Allah. Allah's giving you children. Well, teach them the Quran. Teach them the Sunnah. Teach them Islam. Take them into the Masjid. You know, let them memorize the Quran. Teach them the du'as of the Quran and the Sunnah. And try to work on their akhlaq. May Allah give our children the best akhlaq, the best manners, the manners of the Quran and the Sunnah, inshallah. But we need to teach them. We need to guide them. We need to interact with them. We need to have love. And we need to be gentle with them. And we need to work with wisdom. Allah says in the Quran, call to Allah with hikmah. So we want to call our children to Allah. We want to take our children to Allah. We need to do this with good akhlaq, good manners, with wisdom and good dealings. Above all, Muslims believe in afterlife. So we believe in the afterlife success. So we want to be successful in dunya. We want to be successful in the afterlife. And they, and that's why children need to follow all the teachings of the Holy Quran. As parents, you need, you just need to make effort to bring your children according to the teachings of Islam. See? So, very important, Quran and Sunnah. Quran and Sunnah. So, that's why... Children need to follow the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah. We need to teach our children according to the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah. It's obligatory as Muslim parents to guide children about the following knowledge. Okay, now this is part upon us because the Prophet Allah says seeking knowledge is compulsory. It's part upon every Muslim. We have to seek knowledge. Our children must seek knowledge. Our children must learn. They must understand the Quran and the Sunnah, the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah, the message of the Quran and the Sunnah. So, this is a must. Islamic beliefs. We must teach our children the Islamic beliefs. What do we Muslims believe in? We must teach them about La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. We must teach them about Tawheed, about the oneness of Allah. We must teach our children the Quran knowledge. So they must know the Quran, the teachings of the Quran, the message of the Quran. Allah says it's Hudalil Muttaqeen, it's a guide for those who are conscious of Allah. So we need to make our children be conscious of Allah. 
And then only the Quran will guide them. Knowledge about hadith. We may, must teach our children the knowledge about the hadith, which is the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his sayings, his actions, his words. We must teach our children about the guidance about all Muslim rituals and obligations, like teach them about salat, teach them about hajj, about zakat, teach them about, you know, all the rituals that we perform in Islam and all the obligations. And we should teach you from the rights and the duties as Muslims followers. So as being the Ummah, the nation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we must teach our children the rights and the duties. Okay? What's our duties as being Muslims? The rights of being Muslims. And we must teach our children the rights of Allah. What are the rights of Allah and the rights of the people? See, our children should know the rights of Allah and the rights of the people. Our dealings with Allah and our dealings with the people. Our connection with Allah and how we should also connect with the people and deal with the people. Knowledge about companions and all important personalities of Islam. Like our children should know about Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Sayyidina Ali. You know, these are the great Sahaba. Allah says in the Quran, Allah is pleased with them. And they are pleased with Allah. So our children should know about the Sahaba, about the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Detailed knowledge about the Prophet. So our children should know a lot about the Prophet of Allah. His seerah, his life, his mission, his effort, his struggle, his sacrifice, his worrying and his concern, his fikr, his manners, his way of life. Our children should know, you know, in detail about the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they should know detailed knowledge about the angels, about the Day of Judgment, and also they should know and read, you know, different books on Islam. Like read a book on Hajj. Give them a book and say to your children, read this. It's about Hajj. This is about Zakat. This is about fasting in the month of Ramadan. This is about Salat. You know, very important. Get our children to read the more they read the more they'll know and the more they'll know inshallah the more they will practice allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them because allah says the quran it's a guide so we have to know about the quran it's a guide for those who are conscious of allah well if we don't read the quran and if we don't read about islam well how can be how can we be guided? Because we need knowledge. Knowledge is guidance. Allah says in the Quran, the one that knows and the one that does not know, can they be equal? They can't be equal. So let's, uh, let's you know, inform our children, let's teach our children about the deen, about the Quran and the sunnah. Knowledge about the struggle of Islam and every Islamic historical event. You know, this is... You know, teach our children about, you know, the time the Prophet of Allah was born and his mission and his sacrifice and his message. And teach our children about the Akhirah, the next life, the day of judgment. We need to prepare ourselves for this. Teach our children about Tawheed, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Very important. And we have to interact with our children. We have to, you know, perform Salat with our children. We should, you know, have talim at home. We should, you know, read together the Quran. We should read together the words and the the 
a hadith, the sayings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam together with our children. We should have talim, which is teaching and learning. You know, daily, it could be five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. We should sit with our children and we should have talim, daily talim. See, one Sahabi, he was looking at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet of Allah was kissing Sayyidina Hassan or Hussein, kissing the children. He was holding them, he was hugging them. And one Sahabi said, Ya Rasulullah, I have 10 children, but I never kiss my children. And the Prophet of Allah says, he says, look, what can I do for you? How can I help you if Allah has deprived you of his mercy of his love see so we need to okay interact with our children show them love show them respect be nice to them be kind towards them never swear at your children we have to be the best role model. And the Prophet of Allah, he had the best akhlaq. And he was the walking Quran. Because the parents, at first, the parents, they are the best example for the children. Because the children are always at home seeing their parents, watching their parents, listening to their parents. So the parents must have best akhlaq. Best manners. Before seven years, the parents must take part in playing with their children like a kid, like a child. Even we should come down and be humble and be like a kid and play with our children. When they're very young, before they reach the age of seven. They should love and kiss their children. Above all, be gentle with your children and guide them with affection. See? <laughs> Even the Prophet of Allah, while he was praying, his grandchildren used to jump on him. And the Prophet of Allah, once he was performing Salat, he stayed in sujood for a long time. While he was leading the prayers. And at the end of the prayers, the Sahaba said, the companions, the Prophet of Allah, you know, we know that you stayed in sujood for a long time. What happened? We thought you're never going to get up. He said, well, my, my, my grandkids were jumping on me. They were holding on me. They're on my back. And I didn't want to disturb them. I was waiting for them to come down. Then not only, you know, I came up from sujood. Allahu Akbar. Even Salat. The Prophet of Allah is praying in Salat and he doesn't want to, what? Disturb the kids. He didn't want to, you know, get, make them upset in any way. Allah Akbar. Look at the akhlaq. The Prophet was patient. Allah Akbar. Today, we're not patient. It's sad. In Australia, nearly 50% of the marriages, what? End up in divorce. They break up. A hundred people get married. Fifty of them divorce. It's sad. What's going to happen to the children? And the parents should be the best role model. They should have the best akhla. But they haven't got this quality anymore. Screaming and yelling and swearing. And those poor children, they are traumatized. Instead of, you know, receiving love, they are receiving hatred. They are not learning the beauty of Islam. Because the parents are not practicing Islam. So above all, be gentle with your children and guide them with affection. Be nice. Take it easy. What's the matter? What's, 
What's the problem? Take it easy, relax, be patient. Allah says in the Quran, seek Allah's help through patience, 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 be patient. And Salat. So we have to be patient when it comes to us. We have to be patient. And now Salat is the second thing we have to connect to Allah because only Allah can help us. No one can help us. Only Allah can help us. Only Allah can keep that family together. So we need to ask Allah. Religious knowledge is very important. As Muslim parents, we must guide our children with religious knowledge. Islam also guides about children's education. Islam is complete. Parents are ordered by Islam to teach their children after seven years of age. It's very important. Remember, before seven, from birth to seven, show them love, 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 respect. Kiss them, hold them, carry them, you know, you know, be with them with love. Respect them, show them rahmat. <clears throat> this is a hadith. The Prophet Allah says, observe justice in dealing with your children. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Observe justice in dealing with your children in the same manner in which you expect them to observe justice in being kind and good to you. See, very important. If you show them love, Allah will make them show you love. See, what you give out, that's what you're going to receive. If you give out love to your children, well, you receive love in return. Which, especially when you get older, they'll show you love. But if you're going to give out hatred, you're going to hate your children, scream and yell at them, well, they will never love you. They will distance themselves from you. Because Allah has a sunnah. Allah has a way. And his way is, if you remember Allah, Allah will remember you. Islam is a practical religion that compromises that, that comprises multiple beliefs, rituals and regular obligations. Your children need to learn all the Islamic concepts, beliefs and religious rituals to be pious. See, so we want our children to be pious. We want our children to be silent. We want our children to have the best akhlaq. We want our children to know the Quran and the Sunnah. We want our children to practice the Quran and the Sunnah. Well, you have to teach them. You have to spend time with them. You have to take them where they can learn the Quran. You have to take them to the masjid where they can pray in jamaat behind the imam. But today, everyone's busy working, work, 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 and no time for the children. And the children don't know nothing about Islam. They're not praying. They have no idea. Once I was in Auburn Station and I was waiting for the train and one young man came and I said to him, Salam. And uh, I asked him, I said, what nationality? He said, I'm Turkish. Well, I said, can you say La ilaha illallah? He said, I, don't, I, I, I can't say La ilaha illallah. He goes, oh, what is La ilaha illallah? I don't know what La ilaha illallah is. A Turkish young man, he was about probably 18 years old. He says, my parents never taught me la ilaha illallah. See that? My parents never taught me la ilaha illallah. See, so if the parents don't teach the children the deen, Islam, well, the children will never, no one understand Islam. If they don't understand Islam, then how are they going to practice Islam? Most importantly, as a parent, raise your children according to Islam and you will get unlimited rewards. You know, we are doing this only to please Allah. We're doing this because our children is an amanat, is a trust, 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to guide our children, you know, to teach our children. Because in Islam, when we leave this dunya, we want our children to continue worshipping Allah, continue spreading the haq, the truth, spreading the kalama la ilaha illallah. And when we die, the Prophet Allah says that our book will be closed except for three people. And one of those is if you left a salih child behind, if you have left a pious child behind and he's making dua for you, he's worshipping Allah, he's obeying Allah, he fears Allah and he's making dua to you, your book of deeds will be open and you'll be receiving more and more reward from Allah. Even you have left this dunya, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue sending you hasanat, you know, blessings, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate your rank. Islam is a complete code of life. Allah has defined each and everything in the Holy Quran and the Ahadith of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam about every role of life. Every child carries a lot of value. So, you know, show value to your children. And importance in Islam. They're very important in Islam, our children. They are the future. He will be the future of the Islamic community and one child can bring a lot of value in the development of Islam, you know. You know imagine your child becomes hafiz of Quran, mashallah. We have, we have parents that make their kids hafiz of Quran. And then they become, you know, alim, ulama, they become scholars of Islam. They become leaders, they teach the deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be very pleased with their parents. See? So some parents are so, you know, they really want their children to be close to Allah. They want their children to know the deen. They want their children to be, you know, like the stars for this ummah of the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And very important, our children now, we've got to work on their hearts. How do we work on their hearts? Keep the deen, Islam in their hearts and encourage them to focus their lives on pleasing Allah. See, we're teaching them, look, you should, we are doing all this only to please Allah. We must be connected to Allah. See, we're teaching our children how to connect to Allah, how to please Allah by obeying Allah and His Messenger. Continue their classes at the local masjid, mosque, in order to develop their knowledge and understanding of the Holy Quran and Sunnah. This will enable them only to improve their own worship, but also to spread the word of Allah within their community when they get older. See, very important. We learn when we're young, and when we get older, we spread this knowledge, we convey this knowledge. We remind one another, Allah says, reminding one another is beneficial for the believers. So we want our children to spread the haq, to spread the truth. As Sayyidina Luqman alayhi salam, he says, Oh my son, establish salat and encourage others to do the good and forbid them from the evil. See, so when our children get older with this knowledge, they will spread the haq. But if they haven't got the knowledge, if you had not taught them anything about Islam, well, how can they spread the heart? How can they forbid from the evil? Sayyidina Luqman, he says, Oh my son, if it be anything equal to the weight of a grain, even something very minute, or of a mustard seed, though it be in a rock, something very minute, like a mustard seed, or even smaller, be in a rock, or be in the heavens, or be on the earth. Allah will bring it forth. Allah knows where it is. Allah SWT is all knowing, all seeing, all hearing. Allah, and Allah SWT can bring it out forward. Verily, Allah is subtle in bringing out that grain, well aware of its place. So, we had, Luqman is teaching his son about yakin, about certainty, about that Allah is all powerful all knowing, all seeing, all hearing. So we need to connect our children to Allah. 
Very, very important. And look, he's teaching his children that we should establish Salat. So look, my Allah is telling his son that we must establish Salat. Establish Salat. You must build on your Salat. Your Salat must be strong. It must be powerful. It must have that connection. Because Allah says Salat will protect you from all kinds of haram, from fahshar, munkar, from all kinds of evil. So, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, alhamdulillah, you know, especially at this day and age, it's very difficult to bring out, bring up our children according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Why? Because everyone, the parents are very busy doing other things, working. So, we need to start when they are very, very young. We need to teach them while they're very, very young. When the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that when they reach the age of seven, you should teach them Salah. And when they enter the age of ten, now they should establish Salat, daily Salah. So that's why very important that let's teach our children the deen, Quran and Sunnah and tell them that Islam is a complete, perfect way of life and tell them this is our way, this is our life. Allah says in the Quran, oh, Allah, say, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ أَدْنُعِنُ اللَّهِ Allah says in the Quran, oh, Allah, say that this is my way. So the Prophet is saying this is my way. I call people to Allah with insight and those who follow me, they should also do the same, see? So the Prophet of Allah, he is calling people to Allah. And, and Allah says in the Quran, those who follow the Prophet, they should do the same. So that's why we need to teach our children. So when they grow up, they'll also call to la ilaha illallah. This is our way. We are with Allah, jada We work with Allah. We remember Allah. We worship Allah. We love Allah. We respect Allah. We are grateful to Allah. We are uh, trying our best to be obedient to Allah. This is our way. So our children, and I want to finish with this. Remember that a hadith that I always mention, very important, especially for our children. The, the companions ask, O oh, Prophet of Allah, who should we befriend? Who should we interact with? Who should our friends be? So very important, our children, they must be with good friends. They must be with true believers. They must be with the people of Allah. So the Prophet of Allah says, he says, be with those, interact with those, sit with those. When you look at them, they remind you of Allah. So our children, we must take them and we must let them interact with the people of Allah. So when they look at them, the people of Allah will remind our children of Allah. So the Prophet of Allah says, be with those. When you look at them, they remind you of Allah. And when you listen to them, your knowledge of Islam will increase. So we must take our children and let them interact with the mashayikh, with the ulama, with the imams, with the teachers, with the scholars of deen. So their knowledge will increase. And the Prophet Allah says, when you look at their actions, their actions will remind you of the akhirah. So let our children have friends. When they look at their actions, they will see each other praying. They'll see each other and meet each other in the masjid, in the madrasa. They'll come together in gatherings where they can learn the Quran. But at the same time, we can take our children fishing. We can take our children bushwalking. We can take our children, you know, to the, to the country, to the ocean. We can have picnics and barbecues. You know, at the same time, we have to have the balance. What is the balance? Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan. The balance is, oh Allah, give me goodness in this life. So we want to give goodness, you know, to our children in this life. And we say, oh Allah, also give me goodness in the akhirah. And we want our children to be successful in the next life as well. And we say, oh Allah, protect us from the nar of Jahannam. So we need to fear Allah. We need to keep our duty to Allah. We need to obey Allah. We need to teach our children to obey Allah so they can keep their duty to Allah because we fear the punishment. And may Allah protect us. Allahumma ajirina min nar We seek Allah's protection from the hellfire. So may Allah help us. So very important. 
Let your children interact with the people of Allah because when they see them, when they see the people of Allah, your this will remind your children of Allah. When they listen to them, this will increase the knowledge of your children. And when they see their actions, their actions will remind your children of the next life. May Allah SWT accept us, may Allah SWT guide us and all our children along the path of Ihdina Salat al Mustafim, Quran and Sunnah. And we need to make a lot of dua. Day and night we should be crying in front of Allah and asking Allah to guide our children so our children, inshallah, can practice the Quran and the Sunnah and convey the Quran and the Sunnah, invite to Quran and Sunnah, and may Allah SWT protect us and guide us and love us and accept us and purify us. And may Allah SWT accept us to be amongst the Salihin, to be amongst the Muqarrabin, to be amongst the people of Jannah. May Allah SWT protect us and our children and all our descendants until Yawm Muqiyam protect us and guide us along the path of Ihdana Salat al-Mustaqeem, which is the Quran and the Sunnah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا رحم الراحمين يا رحم الراحمين يا رحم الراحمين يا حي يا قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا كريم ألف لا بما الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك أستعيد يا الله يا حي حقياه هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم يا ودود يا مالك الملك يا لطيف يا لطيف يا لطيف يا مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين يا هنان يا منان يا بديع السماوات والأرض لا إله إلا الله الملك الحق المبين محمد رسول الله صادق وعد الأمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا ربي يرحم أمة سيدنا محمد مصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم توفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين ربي مغفر للذنوب ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقناع ذاب النار أدخلنا الجنة في الردوس على معنى برار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم رب جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي اللهم ربنا وتقبل دعاء اللهم ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي والمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرية لا قرطين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم ربنا يا ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السمنانين وَاتُبْ عَلَيْنَا يَا مَوْلَانَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ رَبَّنَا إِنَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا وَارْحَمْنَا وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الرَّاحِمِينَ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ وَارْحَمْ وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الرَّاحِمِينَ يَا رَبِّ لَكَ الْحَمْدُ كَمَا يَنْبَغِي لِجَلَالِ وَجْهِكَ وَعَظِيمِ سُلْطَانِكَ اللَّهُمَّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَارْحَمْنِي وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ الْأَحْيَاءِ مِنْهُمْ وَالْأَمْوَاتِ اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاغف عنا اللهم ربنا يا ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليك وكالته رب العرش العظيم حسبنا الله نعم الوكيل حسبنا الله نعم الوكيل حسبنا الله نعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير فرانك ربنا وليك المصير وفع لنا وفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إني أسألك العافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم رب زدني علما اللهم سلي وسلي مبارك لا سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما نصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة اللهم سلي على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله سيدنا محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم المالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الظالمين آمين الحمد لله الله mentions as you love to say this I just made the dua Allah it's a dua in the Quran it's a dua it's a beautiful dua when it comes to children we say oh Allah please you make my wives and my children you know, and my descendants be the comfort of my eyes. Allahu Akbar. 
this is something great. Meaning, when I see my wife and when I see my children, well, they should be the comfort of my eyes. I should be delight, delighted to be with them. I should be so happy to be with them, to see them. See? So that's why we keep on making this dua. Be with Allah. Ask Allah. Worship Allah. Keep your duty to Allah. And ask Allah to make your your wives and your children the comfort of your eyes. So when we're with our wives, we should be happy. When we're with our children, we should be happy. May Allah SWT put happiness in our hearts. May Allah SWT give us success in dunya and success in the akhirah. May Allah guide our children. May Allah guide all our descendants until Yawm Qiyamah along the path of Quran and Sunnah. Allahumma sadni wa sadni ma barak ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sallam ajma'in. Subhana rabbika rabbin izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamu ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.